I'm Stephen Foskett, publisher of Gestalt IT and organizer of Tech Field Day. We're here at KubeCon North America 2022 in beautiful Detroit, Michigan, and I'm catching up with some companies that are relevant to the Tech Field Day and Gestalt IT community. I'm here now with uh, Brad Maltz from Dell Technologies, and I have to start off here with a question. Uh, Dell, Kubernetes, KubeCon, Cloud Native, um, what's the story? So why is Dell here? That's, a, that's an awesome question. So when you think about Dell, you typically think about server, storage, data protection, hyper-converged stuff. But the reality is when people are trying to build out a DevOps operating model, they really have to go and deal with automation of things like our portfolio, of how Kubernetes and containers actually work on top of our portfolio as well as in the multi-cloud world. So realistically, we're here to help people understand as you're moving up from an operational model into the DevOps world, whether you're platform engineers, SREs, whatever, how can Dell help you do that through our integrations, our technologies we build, and platforms? And one of the things I think that, well, it's true that every cloud is actually just a computer, and Dell makes basically all the computers. Um, yep. <laughs> you know, all the different components. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of people are going cloud native. A lot of people are using public cloud services. Uh, but many people aren't, and many many environments are building their own cloud. They're building out things in their own data center. They're basically making their own uh, environment. And so it makes sense that you'd want to have uh, a, a cloud integration throughout the stack. Yep. And it sounds like that's kind of what Dell's message is, is if you want to build something, you know, go to somebody who can provide everything to build that infrastructure. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. So we're looking at it through the lens of, the multi-cloud world is here. People are living in Amazon and Azure and Google. They've been doing that for years. They're not going to stop doing that. But they also, the industry is realizing we on-prem is important and colos are important. And that means that owning infrastructure under the covers of that is important. So when you look through that lens, you need to make sure that you can handle storage in a standardized way, that you have the ability to connect data and storage assets between public cloud on-prem colo. As also going up the stack, when you start talking Kubernetes and OpenShift and Tanzu and all the distros, how do you look at them from a full stack perspective, integrating everything together? That's exactly what we see is that multi-cloud kind of by design discussion instead of multi-cloud by default. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. But um, I want to shift gears here a little bit because you mentioned the S word. Um, my background is in storage, your background yep. is in storage. Yep. Uh, a lot of people in the cloud native space don't really understand just how hard storage is to do and what a challenge it is to have truly integrated storage. And that's one thing that I know that Dell is really working on is the ability to truly integrate storage with Kubernetes. Many people may not have heard that story. So tell us a little bit more about integration between storage and Kubernetes. Sure, about three years ago, we had a set of customers come to us and they were like, hey, this Kubernetes thing is real. Containers are important to us and you have a very robust storage portfolio, but in Kubernetes, we don't want to still have to go manage things from the element managers. We want to be able to manage them natively from Kubernetes. It's the abstraction of choice. Can we help abstract the controls of storage? So in this case, they said, you know what? We're going to build these things called container storage modules. And the container storage module, or CSM for short, are actually open source today. They're not a product. You don't pay for them today. You go to our um, github.com slash Dell, you're going to find our CSM uh, portfolio there. And it's made up of multiple modules. It's made up of modules, for example, of how do you control provisioning and snapshotting natively from kubectl, kubectl. How do you actually go and manage authorization of CRUD commands, of create and destroy for persistent volumes? Well, today you go to element managers and create volumes, you attach them to Kubernetes, but through the CSM auth module, we can enable an end user, a Kubernetes admin, to just from kubectl, they can be uh, able to create a new volume that natively goes down to Flex, creates it, creates the persistent volume claim automatically in Kubernetes, and they never touch the back end from a storage perspective. So our goal with storage is to make storage easier while enabling all the robust enterprise features to be brought up through Kubernetes. And I think that this is one of those things, again, that um, many developers may not be really familiar with, because I think a lot of developers are used to basically uh, creating on a laptop, you know, deploying uh, in Amazon or something. You don't really think about enterprise storage. You don't think about enterprise storage features or inter enterprise storage performance. But as soon as your application starts getting heavy, heavy I.O. or needing advanced features or something, then you start thinking about it. 
because truly it is very, very difficult to deliver, you know, high-end performance at scale for applications without having some kind of storage, uh, specific purpose, special purpose storage device behind it. And it sounds like, you know, for storage nerds like me, it, it, it's actually really nice to think that uh, some of these advanced storage devices have a future even in a cloud native world. Do you see that uh, happening and, and staying that way? 100%. So actually at Dell Tech World this year, we announced Project Alpine. And Project Alpine plays even further upon what you're hitting on, which is where we wanted to go and say, our storage assets are very powerful with what they've been built on and delivered over the years. And that value speaks volumes to customers, even in the public cloud. How can we make it so that public cloud customers can consume our storage assets and do that also while managing on-premises assets at the same time? And that's literally where things like Project Alpine are going to take us forward to enable those customers that need persistence and storage-related features in a multi-cloud deployment. Yeah, and it seems to me that that's one of those things that's really a, a trend in the industry. We're seeing a lot of companies talk about how they can basically bring enterprise class features and storage into the cloud right. and how to integrate those features natively with Kubernetes and with other application workflows. Correct. Yeah. Now, it's hard to do that if you don't really know much about software development. And I know that Dell has a ton of software developers. People might not know that, but um, you've also got uh, DevRel uh, built into the DNA of the company now, thanks to some of the work that you've been involved in, right? How are How is Dell working with developers at KubeCon and places like this to help sort of spread the gospel of integration? Yeah, so one of the things that's newer within my role is the notion of building out the developer relations team. And a DevRel team in the context of Dell is really to do a few things. First of all, we need to make sure that we get involved in the community. Community is key when you start talking about Kubernetes and public cloud and all that. And that means working with the developer. Now, I hate to be pedantic and define developer. When we say developer, we mean infrastructure developers. We mean the platform engineers, the SRE folks, the ones that care about automation down through the infrastructure. So our goal with DevRel is to make sure the community is there, that we're a participant, we're contributing, and that people are aware of what we actually have to offer through that same community. So my DevRel team that we're building out are made up of lead developer advocates, and their job is to become part of the community and to bring that data back from our end users, our community members, back into Dell so that my product management half of my role also is able to put that into our roadmaps and influence where storage and server and hyperconversion, everything else goes. I think that it's great that you wanted to define what you mean by developers, because one of the things that we at Gestalt IT have been talking about, we actually just did, did a roundtable discussion about this. It seems like a lot of companies in the enterprise IT space don't actually know what a developer is, um, or or maybe are just a little fuzzy on developers generally. Mm -hmm. So it actually warms my heart to hear you say that there are different flavors of developers. There's developers like SREs that are basically trying to bring this knowledge into their into their company so that from there they can help uh, act as sort of a liaison between hardware and infrastructure world and the developer developers who are actually literally writing software. Yeah, is that, exactly. the, is that the, the, the plan that you think is going to happen in most of these enterprises? Yeah, so I actually have a theory that I'll throw some numbers around. They're not, they're not real analyst numbers, but here's the way I look at it. There's about 10% of the customer base as I look at it that they're going to become these kind of unicorns in the DevOps space. They're going to be able to find the people, skill up the people, go after the GitOps type uh, things and speaking code always. When they look at a Dell, they really want the integration modules, the Ansible modules, the Terraform providers. They want all, how can we use code to do X, Y, Z? There's another percentage of the industry that's not going to make the pivot to DevOps. They're going to be like, okay, on the back end, we just don't want to. Executives don't care. The business doesn't have technology as a leading vehicle of how they go to market. So they're going to probably be more traditional sysadmin, sysops. Then you get that soft, squishy middle of 60 to 70% in the middle. And those are the people that are more traditional sysadmins, operators, that have the desire to become more DevOps shops, and they just need to be helped there. How do you actually get education in place? Hands-on labs, tutorials, how-to videos. How do you help make sure that they have an easier user experience, not the traditional one, but not this really, really low-level code one, that's different areas that we see the industry moving towards, and that's where Dell's going to hyper-focus over the next few years. Yeah, and, and I think that that's really the area, too, and it's kind of a description of what's happening in a lot of enterprises. I think a lot of enterprises are absolutely going cloud-native. A lot of enterprises are adopting Kubernetes. 
but they're doing it on their terms. They're doing it right. in a way that's productive, that matches their needs, that matches the needs of their internal organizations, their internal customers, and then translates into their external customers, but isn't really let's throw out everything and go, you know, microservices exactly. for everything. Yeah. And I think too that these are the kind of people who are used to buying from a company like Dell in terms of, you know, basically they, they've been your customers for a long time. They have a, an understanding of the level of support that they can get from a big organization like Dell. And that's what they want in this new cloud native world as well. And I think that that's one of the things that maybe is overlooked. It's, it's kind of a, it seems sometimes like some of these companies are speaking past each other because some of the companies really don't have that focus and some of them really do. And some of the customers don't have that focus and the customers do. And I think that they just kind of need to find each other, even though we're all here at, you know, KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, we're all allegedly talking cloud native, but our definition of all of these things is slightly different. 100%. I actually have customers that come up to me and they're like, so Dell, I'm like, uh-huh, what's your job? And they're like, oh, we own the automation. I'm like, okay, do you uh, do automation of the infrastructure? They're like, sort of, but we don't handle the infrastructure. And they're like, what's Dell have to offer me? And that's what's happening right now is the divides in the customer base, they're starting to figure out how to maybe come together. And Dell plays an extremely important role in that coming together part. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that there are some other areas as well that Dell can play a role in. So we talked about you know developer relations and, and sort of spreading the gospel of cloud native internally. Uh, there's also, uh, within the DevOps community, there's DevSecOps and, oh, yeah. and financial operations. And I think that you guys have some, some role to play there as well. Yeah, so I have another view that ties in here, which is this kind of this trifecta of ops, right? In this XOps space, which is not a term I invented, it's out there. And in the XOps space, you basically have DevOps, which really is about infrastructure application kind of automation on the on top side of it. You have this thing of data ops, which when you talk about storage, storage and data are not the same thing that you know very well. And in the storage and data ops space, doing data governance, data management, data set management is key. And if a company does not understand how to do that or get moving along that line, they're really not going to be able to truly transform. But the third missing piece is the business criteria of things like procurement, cost management. And that's where FinOps comes in. So this kind of three-legged stool trifecta that we have of DevOps, data ops, and FinOps has to come together to help customers kind of move forward more transformationally in the future. That's great. And, and I think that this really does, like I said, match the reality of enterprise IT, the reality of enterprises that are trying to go cloud native and trying to adopt some of these cloud native tools. And frankly, the reality of the most of the market that aren't, you know, cloud native born in the cloud hyperscalers, mm -hmm. which reflects, frankly, most companies in the world. And honestly, reflect the kind of companies that tune in for Gestalt IT and Tech Field Day things. So it's great to be able to present this uh, to, to that crowd through this, this format. So I really appreciate you joining us here at KubeCon. Um, if people want to stay connected, if they want to learn more, uh, where can they reach out to you and learn more about what Dell is doing? So it's real easy, developer.dell.com. Um, we're creating this portal for our end users to be able to understand how to interface from a community perspective. There's always Twitter. Feel free to reach out to me at bmaltz or as well as straight out to Dell Tech on Twitter as well. Great. And as for us uh, here at Gestalt IT, we cover this stuff all the time. If you go to YouTube slash Gestalt IT video, you'll find videos like this one from KubeCon. You'll find our weekly news rundown. You'll find our podcasts there. And this is really our focus as well. You'll also see uh, some great content from Dell Technologies over at the Tech Field Day side. So go to techfieldday.com, look for Dell, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys at a future Field Day event coming up in 2023 as well. Yes, definitely.